uh, making an interesting video or one that performs well is very much like giving a presentation or a speech. And so you need some type of opening hook in the beginning of your speech. You know, how, how do you draw the people in? The same thing holds true with video. And you know, today people's attention span is very short. So, you know, I talk in my book several different ways. There's, there's many different ways. Three really easy ways I can share right now are um, you can start your video with a question. Welcome to the Marketing Your Practice podcast, where we guide natural health and wellness experts through the pitfalls of marketing. Each episode, you'll learn simple, effective, easily actionable, and heart-centered marketing strategies. And here's your host, Angus Pike. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, friends. Welcome to the Marketing Your Practice podcast. Today, I've got Rick Cesari on the show. Now, for those of you that don't know Rick, Rick has helped major brands like GoPro and George Foreman build billion, that's with a B, billion dollar brands through brand response advertising and strategic video marketing. Now, Rick has an upcoming book called Video Persuasion. Now, I'm excited to have a look at this because it aims to put all those kind of big brand secrets in the hands of us as small businesses, as practice owners as well. So we can kind of learn all those secrets. Now, Rick is a best-selling author, multiple books. He's a speaker, a consultant, a brand marketing, and he, Rick is a guru, okay? Now, today we're going to be talking all about video best practices so we can build influence in our community and help us change more lives. So, Rick, welcome to the show. Hey, Angus. It's great to be here, and thanks for such a great introduction. Oh, man, it's, it's all there. I've been excited I mean, I get excited about all of these um, interviews, but I've got to tell you, Rick, I woke early this morning because we're different sides of the world. Um, mm -hmm. And I got an opportunity knowing that we're going to chat to kind of look through your bio and all the amazing things, you know, whether it be kind of GoPro and George Foreman, these are really iconic brands um, as well. So perhaps for our audience that doesn't know you and hasn't perhaps had the chance to stalk you online like I have over the last week or so, can you kind of bring them up to speed? Sure. Let me just give you kind of the condensed version. Otherwise, we'd spend the whole show talking about my whole experiences because I'm 62 now and have had a lot of life experiences. But, um, you know, I uh, believe it or not, I, uh, my degree was in biology. I graduated from college and my plan was my best friend in high school and I, we talked about it and I, we were going to go to dental school. He's a dentist today, but I took, I went the other direction. And after um, college, I went back down to Daytona Beach where my family was living. And I was a little bit of a bum for a year. I was a bartender and a lifeguard. And I started reading books, motivational books and about books about how people made money. And I got into real estate investing and I started going to some seminars. And um, I basically uh, went out and did what this guy told me, bought a house, sold it, made about $12,000 in two weeks. And I, and I was so happy, I called up a Florida business magazine and they did a story on him that helped his seminar business. He asked me to come work for him. And so I started promoting real estate seminars and that's how I first learned to do marketing. And just to give you an idea how long ago this was, we were using newspaper ads to um, promote these seminars. So it went on, but these guys were also some of the first people in the U.S. to start using television uh, infomercials and direct response. And so I made a bunch of um, uh, early infomercials for them. But then my passion is actually in health and nutrition, believe it or not, mm. and uh, mainly from a standpoint of healthy eating. And so I was really into juicing at the time. And this was the very end of the 80s, like 1989, 1990. And my brother and I started a company called Trillium Health Products. And we created two brands, the Juice Man Juicer and the Bread Man Bread Machine. And our whole mission with that company was to teach people to eat a healthier diet uh, so they could prevent disease. And that business, we had the right product at the right time and it just took off and it grew to 75 million in sales in wow. about four years. We sold it to a company in Chicago called Salton Housewares. I was burned out. I took a little bit of time off. Uh, they called me back and said, hey, we liked the way you were doing marketing. Uh, would you help us do your marketing? So I kind of started an agency by accident because people were asking me. And so Sultan came back and the product they brought me was this slanted grill. It wasn't the George Foreman grill at the time, but we turned it into that. And um, then just one cool product after the other came in, uh, Sonicare toothbrush, um, uh, OxyClean, uh, the, you know, more recently, you mentioned the GoPro camera, but literally thousands of other products over the years. Those are just some of the bigger ones. And one thing I want to mention to your listeners, 
um, all those products I started working with, they were not big brands when I started. They were doing less than a million dollars in sales, and we used just some basic direct response marketing, uh, television infomercials, online video to help grow those brands into household uh, names. Yeah. You know, one of the things, having done so many of these interviews, Rick, it always amazes me when I get an opportunity to speak with people like yourself who have had almost heroic careers in marketing. So few of them have marketing degrees. It tends to be one of those things that, you know, the, the school of hard knocks, that learning, and it really encourages me. And I hope that our listeners kind of get this because we have chiropractors and naturopaths and Chinese med practitioners and stuff like that. And we don't need a marketing degree behind us. You know, there are proven strategies that help us share a message. It's a lot of what we're going to talk about today because, you know, I, I would imagine that with time, video has come more and more a part of kind of what you're sharing as, as well. Mm -hmm. One of the first things we want to kind of touch on today, and I'm hoping we've got some time to talk about some branding stuff afterwards, or I'm, I'm also hoping that this first date goes well enough that maybe we can have another conversation later <laughs> on down the track. I, about that so, too. Uh, I can tell you, I'm sure we can fill up a, a, a more than just 45 minutes. <laughs> we'll see how we go there too. I've got a kind of glass full of water here and a nice kind of freshly made coffee. So we be careful there, the, the challenge is out there. But let's, let's start with this concept that there are four keys to a successful video as, as well. Um, what are they? How do we implement those? Um, uh, what are the four keys? Yeah, so that's a great question. And, you know, I approach um, video from a little bit different perspective. It's not about video production. I'm really focused on the content of the video and what, it, what can you put into that video to get the end consumer to take a specific action. And, you know, I always break down. I read a really great book when I was in my early 20s and went to a seminar uh, called How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. And I, believe it or not, and this is a great uh, takeaway for your listeners, uh, making an interesting video or one that performs well is very much like giving a presentation or a speech. And so you need some type of opening hook in the beginning of your speech. You know, how, how do you draw the people in? The same thing holds true with video. And you know, today people's attention span is very short. So, you know, I talk in my book several different ways. There's, there's many different ways. Three really easy ways I can share right now are, um, you can start your video with a question. Um, how, would you, how would you like to have more energy? Um, would you, uh, how would you like to sleep better? Would you like to lose 10 pounds? Something like that where it's a question, and then if the viewer is interested in what you're talking about, um, you know, nobody's ever gonna make a video that appeals to every single person. So don't think that that's the goal. But the goal is you're going to have a certain target audience, and if they're interested in that one subject, they're going to wait and hear the answer to that question, which hopefully you'll provide in the video. Um, you know, another great way to start the video um, is with a factoid. Um, when we started our juicer, you know, when you talked about not having a marketing degree, I really believe my biology degree served me really well in marketing because I basically believe in selling through education. And I think a lot of your listeners um, might agree with that, that the more you can educate the consumer, you're not selling them anything, you're leading them into a common sense decision. So um, one of the things we did, you can start a video with a factoid. So um, there had been a scientific study and I saw this on CNN, it said that there was an element that they just found in broccoli that had been proven to prevent breast cancer. So we put that factoid up um, and the opening of the video, and then anybody that was interested in that subject then would listen to the rest of what the video was. And so that's another um, great example um, that, that, you know, from real life that really worked and, and it was a health aspect. And then, uh, you know, a third way to do it is just, um, you always hear about storytelling and you need to tell a story. If you can tell a short story at the beginning of the video, uh, that's another thing that's gonna capture people's attention. Um, but let's go full circle now and go back to the Dale Carnegie thing, uh, how to win friends to influence people. Uh, he had a formula for a speech, and this isn't sophisticated at all, but I've used it in a lot of my videos over the years. He said, tell the people what you're gonna say say it and then tell them what you said. Mm. And that seems simple, but you'd be surprised how many people do not do that. Mm. Uh, use yourself an example. How many times have you watched a TV commercial or an online video and you have no idea what they're talking about 
and you know you get into the video and you end up wasting a lot of time and I'll give you a perfect example I like to tell people very upfront what the video is going to be about because again if it's if they're going to be your target audience they'll listen and I'll give you a perfect example when we made all the go -co GoPro commercials Every one of them, we started out with the GoPro logo, so the people knew right away it was a GoPro commercial. Usually, you don't see the logo to the end. Then in the middle, we put generated footage, you know, people uh, jumping off of cliffs, mountain biking, snowboarding, whatever. And then we ended it with an offer. And um, that's another thing which, we, you know, I hope we talk about a little bit more coming up is that one mistake a lot of people make in their videos, and it depends what the video is for, is not putting an offer in or a CTA, and I don't mean a CTA like buy now or something, but really directing the viewer to the action you want them to take. Mm -hmm. uh, go to my website to find out more information. Uh, go, to, go to the buy button on Amazon. You know, put this product in your shopping cart, whatever. I think that you need to give people instructions in your video about what you want them to do, and they'll follow through. I reckon that that is possibly one of the most often missed ingredients when I'm reviewing videos that people, you know, send me. And, you know, often there's, uh, you know, they're having a challenge exactly like that. No one's going to my website. No one's calling my practice. I'm making these great videos. And I get to the end of it and I go, it's no wonder because you didn't invite them to. Yes, and when we think about, exactly. yeah, the, the law of reciprocity and, and Cialdini talks about it there too. When we've just delivered some great content and, you know, we've, yeah, yeah, it's one of my favorite books. Yeah, <laughs> wonderful. You know, I, so well, we can. I, I mean, a lot of the principles in my video persuasion, I, you know, I not only talk about what I learned the hard way about what it takes to make video work, because in direct response, you know, you, you know right away if a video is working, but I go into the underlying psychological reasons, like rep, rep, I always say that wrong, rep, reciprocity. Yeah, I, I, I know what, and, yes. And, yes. And scarcity and uh, social proof. And, you know, I, I would say, for any of your health practitioners, and you probably know this, probably the single most powerful video that they could use on their website, um, and actually it would give them great feedback, are consumer testimonials or patient testimonials. Um, to me, with all the marketing successes I've had, I feel like testimonials have been a bigger part of that than any other thing. And I'm talking about authentic testimonials of people that have used a product or tried a service or whatever. And there's, to me, that's one of, um, you know, Robert Cialdini's things is social proof, um, you know, and that's what a testimonial is. And it's really the definition of social proof. If people are in a certain situation and they don't know how to act, they'll look to see what someone else is doing. And that's where a, a test, a good testimonial will get somebody to um, try your service or, or buy your product where uh, some, some other thing you're trying might not work as well. Rick, is there a right and a wrong way to do a testimonial? Absolutely. Um, you know, uh, I, you know I, don't, I won't keep referring back to my book, but- um, No, please do. You've done the hard work. So no, that's no, why so, you're here uh, today. Yeah, so what I do is, and I, I still do, first of all, many, many people and companies are afraid to ask for testimonials. And so that's the first step. Don't be afraid to ask. If people like your product or service, they're more than happy to talk about it. So I'm a, a big believer, you always have to ask for it. Um, if any uh, company has a database that they've been selling like an e-commerce company or, a, or a, uh, you know, a health practice where they are emailing their, their uh, client, clients or customers or whatever, um, I reach out to that, to that database and I have an email sequence that I, it's a free download in the book that shows you exactly how to get people to come in and uh, give you these testimonials. And so I'll line up 10 or 15 people and I guarantee you, if you talk to 10 or 15 people and I have a video camera running when I'm doing this, we're doing an interview just like you and I are doing right now. And I ask the people 15 to 20 questions by the end of that time, I know exactly what they like, what they don't like, what could be approved upon, how they heard about it. And that gives me all the information I need to do to market. But then I also have the video that I use then, I take the best sound bites um, that people use and I, I deploy them in the marketing, uh, either on the website or send out an email or, or whatever. So I, I just, I'm a huge believer in testimonials and 
you know, you don't be afraid to ask. That's the first hurdle that most people stumble on. Yeah. One of the challenges, and this is a spreading across kind of healthcare worldwide, unfortunately, and certainly down here in Australia, we're actually not allowed to, as registered health professionals, we're not oh, allowed really? to do testimonials. It's crazy. Um, and it is starting... Yeah, and it's starting to spread further and further and further. So if somebody can't use um, a testimonial there too, what might be some of the other sorts of videos that might be useful for yeah, so them? Here, here's a real good one, and, I, and, and this is a real important one. I think it's more about the, um, I believe everybody should have a video on their homepage uh, that tells it's like the overview video. It's your story. It's your background. It's why you do what you do. Why did you become a doctor? Why did you become a health practitioner? Just like I talked about how I got into marketing and things like that. People want to know that background. They want to know why you're doing what you're doing. So I feel like that's a really important video for everybody to have um, as almost as one of the first things you see. It gives an overview of um, why what you do um, why you're doing it and what's the benefit to the end user, you know, features versus benefits, um, features tell and benefits sell. What, what's the benefit to the end user? It's not always all about you. Um, you know, why should someone come and see you? So, so that's a, a real important video that I think everybody should, should have. Um, then if they're not allowed to use testimonials, um, the three most popular types of online video content are one testimonials, two tutorial videos, and that's how to videos. Mm. And then three is a demonstration video. So I don't know if a, there's certain health practitioner has certain things in their practice that um, certain treatments. And again, I don't know the, the legal rules everywhere, but I might demonstrate if there's a certain thing that you do that alleviates pain. Maybe you can demonstrate mm -hmm. that in a video. Um, let people know a little bit about um, your practice and what you do. Um, but I, I'm, I'm a little, that's, a, that's an interesting what you said about the testimonials. That's like uh, tying one hand behind my back a little bit. Uh, I hope that doesn't spread to the US. It, yeah, I mean, it's interesting. And a lot of it came, uh, look, there, some things, particularly over here in Australia, were incredibly conservative. And I, I kind of got it because, you know, we would see lots of these advertisements in our newspaper of these kind of plastic surgery before and afters. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, you know, I mean, obviously they put their best cases forwards. They can be confusing and misleading. And, yeah, uh, you, you know, don't always get those results. No, results. that's right. Look, and, and it, I find it incredibly frustrating. And, you know, in, in our practice, I'm, I'm still practicing two mornings a week in, in around this stuff there too. You know, I, I have books and books and books of testimonials that were just great for my new patients to sit there and read in the reception area. No, that's, um, a, that's a great way to do it. It alleviates the, a lot of fear and unknown too. Yeah. I wonder this, I'd like your thoughts on this because I often teach to other practitioners here. What we could do is there are case studies, for instance, so published case studies. Mm -hmm. that might be a story of Jane went to the naturopath, had polycystic ovaries, changed her diet, took these supplements and here's what happened and it was published as a research study. Now, although we don't have Jane sitting in front of us and we can't tell the story that way, we could relate the story via a published study, which I think gives a level of authority to it as well. Another yeah, one of the things. And credibility. And I'll, yes. I'll tell you what, that's the second most important thing to me when I'm selling a product because advertisers, if people, you can say a lot of things as an advertiser and a marketer. And if people don't believe you, they won't buy the product. And if they do believe you, they will buy the product. And establishing credibility is probably number two, or if not number one on my list. And, and I use testimonials to help establish credibility. Um, and, and, but you can use third party testimonials. You can use these case studies, like you mm -hmm. said, of um, people that are having great results with, um, uh, you know, a certain type of treatment. And if and that the more credibility you can bring, then and that's that's what I you know call third party testimonials. Somebody mm -hmm. wrote a story about a certain thing or whatever. Um, that that's really really valuable way to market as well. Yeah, and I think we could probably be a little bit cheeky and presuppose. And I've I've done videos in the past that sort of leads in that says, look, I, I, unfortunately, I'm not allowed to tell you about the thousands of success stories, but let me show you what the literature says. You know, yeah, so yeah. inside of that- way around everything. Like, yeah, yeah. there is. And, and I, look, I, I'm a big fan of 
just being honest. You know, if you're great at what you do and you do have success stories, then, you know, that, that kind of statement leading in there also. One of the things I want to kind of circle around to right back that you started with is you talked about content being more important than video production, because that's another thing that often kind of, you know, what cameras do I need and do I need studios and microphones and backgrounds and lighting and all those kind of things there too. So can you expand a little bit about that? Like how professional do we need to be with our videos, our setups, all those kind of things? Yeah, well, you know, that's, that's one of the biggest changes in the whole video production market is how uh, much technology has improved compared, you know, when I first started, um, video, a good video camera cost 60000 to $75,000 and you didn't normally buy those. You would rent them and then you rent out a crew and it was very expensive to do a day of video shooting. And now, um, you know, because of technology, because of also because of social media and people are used to seeing quote unquote non-professional video, um, you know, you can just use um, your cell phone, your Android, because the cameras are really good. But one thing I do talk about in the book, because I've been doing, you know, thousands of hours of video production, you know, you can, if you're going to do this and use a phone and not use a regular camera, which you can do, you need to have a good a light and you can get a light and then also a microphone. Mm -hmm. um, two things, because if the audio quality is bad, nobody's going to sit and listen to your video. And then the, the lighting and the audio are the two areas that you can make a quick improvement. And you can go on Amazon and buy a simple, um, I'll show you something real quick. A simple light like this with a stand. Yeah. Wait, can you see that? Yeah. A simple light with a stand, that's like, that costs $49. And then you can buy a microphone for $39. And both of those things attached to, to, your, to your iPhone or your Android. And then all of a sudden, you have the ability to make really nice videos. Um, and again, it's like anything else. Um, practice makes perfect. None of your listeners or health professionals could go out after a week in school and, and treat patients. Um, with video, the more you do it, the more you're, you're gonna get better at it. I'll give you a good example. I started doing Facebook Lives just about, about a month and a half ago. And my first few were, were just awful because it's a live recording and you know, and it's different than somebody asking you questions. You have to just keep talking. And, um, but then after you do it, you know, now it's uncomfortable um, and, and, and it flows right. So, you know, practice makes perfect. Make a few videos, make some mistakes, um, and eventually you'll get better at it. But the nice thing is people are used to seeing video on social media on facebook and different places and it doesn't have to be the professional quality that it used to be yeah and i wonder if it's even shifted to the extent where you know we're expecting more of this handheld selfie style video that has that production level rather than you know lots of b-roll back and forwards all those kind of things there's a level I believe, of i believe that's true um yeah. and if you like just take the way I used to do testimonials, we call them a talking head. They'd be sitting in a chair. They'd have a nice background with flowers behind them. Mm -hmm. And it would be too overproduced. And that comes across almost as fake. Um, now, to me, the absolute best testimonials, if I'm working with a company and they, they're selling a product or service, and we go to a trade show and I just stand up, not me, I don't, my, my cameraman, we stand up in front of their booth with a microphone in our hand and stick it in someone's face and start asking them questions. Um, then um, that's to me the most authentic type of testimonial because it isn't staged. It is, has that real authentic feeling to it. Yeah. I think authenticity is kind of lost in lots of social media. I think we're searching for it as well. So when we can, when we recognize authenticity, um, it's incredibly kind of magnetic uh, as, as well. So you mentioned three words so far already in the interview that are, uh, I have a chapter in my book called the power. This is my previous book, which came out last fall. Yes. And I have a chapter in the book called the power of why. And I talk about authenticity, credibility and honesty. And those are three things you've already mentioned. And I think those are really valuable in any type of marketing that you do. 
Yeah, great. So we've, we've already got ourselves kind of into a little bit of a rabbit hole. And if our listeners are thinking, hang on, we talked about four secrets. What are my videos got to have? Where are we up to with it there as well? You know, so we talked about an opening in terms of an opening hook for our video. And we gave a couple of different examples there of questions, factoid stories as, as well. So what are some of the other important, you know, if we're talking about factors of a video that's going to be successful, what are the other ingredients that need to be a part of it too, Rick? Yeah, so um, it's, it's important, um, you know, who, who is the video for? Who's your target demographic? And um, that's important as far as, um, you know, what you're saying to the, the, the different people, like who that audience is for. Um, you, you know, we need to do an introduction. We need to demonstrate the product or service. Um, I mentioned this earlier. Um, Focusing on benefits, um, I think that in your in a video um, that you're trying to get uh, people that are interested, um, think about what are the benefits um, that your um, practice or product can offer to the uh, client or end user, and you should mention those benefits in in the video. And um, you know, you, you know, there's different videos for different things and uh you know so it's 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 kind of hard to come up with one set of rules for everything mm -hmm. but i definitely you know like the things that we talked about so far as far as uh, uh you know an opening to hook them in um uh an introduction to introduce your product or service uh who's the video for um um talking about the benefits and then a call to action at the end. And um, not that every video has to have a call to action, like, um, although it, you know, I, I can't think of a lot, many examples where it wouldn't benefit um, after someone gets done watching a video that you aren't telling them the next step to take. Mm. It, but a call to action too, doesn't always have to be get on the phone and ring my practice. It can be exactly. comment down beneath here, share the video, like the video. Exactly. Let me share it, like it. I mean, just, yeah. But I'll tell you what, I, and again, I don't know if this is, there's a psychological rule, but I've found that if you don't tell people what to do, a lot of times they don't do anything. So like you said, share it, like it, um, just something. Yeah, I think there needs to be a clear, I, I'm, I, I couldn't be more in agreement with that concept that we need to tell them what to do next. Um, and if we're missing that part of our video, it can be one of the reasons why we're not having kind of success. Do you have any thoughts around kind of length of videos? We talked about our ever decreasing kind of attention span beforehand as well. How long should our videos be? Yeah, that's a good question. Let, so. Um we will take testimonials out of them because if you have a test testimonials in there, it's going to make it longer. But I try to keep, um, you know, there's not a, a real written rule. And here's what I found. Um, I, I base a lot of what I do with video nowadays um, on direct marketing principles that worked you know, for the Sears catalog in the late 1800s. It worked for print, um, magazine ads, it worked for radio ads, uh, it worked for television, it works on the internet. And um, I'm, I'm a believer in kind of, um, if you have a powerful message that and people are interested, length isn't that important. If somebody's tied into what you're saying and you're, you're delivering good information, somebody will listen for three, four, five minutes. That being said, I try to keep uh, most of my videos under two minutes just because people's attention span is a lot less than, than, um, than it used to be. And there's more distractions. Mm, I, I find myself sometimes, Tariq, even, you know, before I start watching a video, kind of clicking down the bottom and, and seeing how long it is. So before mm -hmm. I even kind of listen to that introduction, I'm like, oh, this is a 12 minute video. I don't have time I'm for not that. Gonna, I'm not going to listen for 12 minutes. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and I guess I miss out because it may have been 12 minutes that I really needed to listen to. But I, I, I figure if I'm doing that, lots of other people are also. So, you know, I, I would remind, you know, our listeners, it, it there are probably multiple different videos that you need to have of multiple different lengths, depending on where people are in their journey of getting to know you that, you know, perhaps in the early stages of them just investigating your practice, then yeah. 30 to 
second to kind of two minute videos, lots of those. And then as you start to build that relationship, we can go on longer dates, you know, as we move. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. And uh, you have to customize them for depending on how you use it. And, um, you know, that's what we were talking about, that video on your homepage that, the, you know, that tells the overview and why you're doing what you're doing. That's two minutes or less. You know, you want to get right to the point for, with people. Yeah. Um, the idea of the kind of target demographic is a conversation that all of us as marketers and entrepreneurs are having all the time. And so many of our audience and particularly, you know, if we've got a naturopath that's listening, this says, Hey man, or a dentist, everyone with a set of teeth, that's who should be coming to see me. So we tend to kind of generalize when we're thinking about a target demographic, Rick, do you have some thoughts? You know, where does that, if you, how do you set a target demographic for something like the George Foreman grill or GoPro? You know, do, is that something that you even kind of try and niche down when you're trying to communicate and share that sort of message? You know, those, um, um, yeah, I'm trying to think of the best way to answer that because I'm going to take it back to the concept of the testimonials. And I'm not saying you using these testimonials in your marketing but that's another good reason to reach out to your client base, your customer base, because to me, that's the answer of what your target demographic is, the people that are buying your product, the people that are coming to your practice. And if you reach out and talk to them and, and, and see who they are, what they do, um, I would be recording these as testimonials, but you could also use it as a focus group. Yes. And, um, that would give me much better information. You know, uh, let's use GoPro as an example. GoPro was successful because when it first launched, they, they carved out a niche. I don't know if you've read a book or heard of a book called The Blue Ocean Strategy. Yes, yeah, yeah I'm aware of the concept, yeah. For blue Ocean. So think about GoPro. This is a camera that a surfer invented in his garage and he's going up against Sony, Panasonic, all the largest camera, Kodak at the time, they're bankrupt now, all the larger cam camera companies in the world. But what he did was he carved out a niche, uh, extreme sports, uh, where other people weren't making the right product. And the camera technology was good, but GoPro was a lot about the mounts, mounting it on the end of a surfboard, mounting it on your helmet, mounting it on a ski pole, and turning the camera back towards yourself so you could take pictures of yourself. So he found a little niche, and our advertising in the beginning um, appealed to extreme athletes, mountain bikers, uh, skiers, snowboarders. But then as the business grew and we wanted to um, get out to a larger target demographic, we started making videos about fishing and we started making videos about families and we started making videos about pets and the users were making videos like that. And those, that's how the commercials change from these action videos to a more broad use of the product. And then you started to appeal to more people. So I would say that you should start um, in whatever your niche is. And then as you start to grow, um, this is another concept in Robert Cialdini's book, uh, The Influence, The Power of uh, the Psychology of Persuasion. It's the concept of liking. When people see other people like themselves, they'll respond better to your advertising and your videos. So that's another reason why testimonials work well. People see people like themselves um, and they, they um, want to be in the position those people are in, I guess. Yeah. Rick, so uh, you mentioned before that, you know, when you started off your Facebook Live, there was uh, a level of kind of not being great at it, maybe being a little bit nervous. And, it, it, you know, getting in front of a camera, if you haven't done it before, can be a huge hurdle for people to jump as well. Um, have you got some thoughts about how to help them over that hurdle? How to, you know, obviously expertise takes time, but how do we speed that process up to get somebody more comfortable in front of a camera and producing videos without so much of the fear? Yeah, that's a good, uh, a great question. Um, I don't know if I have a great answer for you, but I do. Um, I spend a whole chapter in the book about um, being your own spokesperson and that that is the um, most powerful, one of the more powerful marketing things you can do because people want to hear from 
the practitioner, the inventor, the, the founder of the company. And, you know, being in front of the camera, I, again, I'm going to tie it back to a speech analogy um, that people are deathly afraid to get up on stage in front of people and talk. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, I feel like there's a, a lot of similarities in that and that the only way that you can do it is really just, just start doing it. There aren't, there aren't a lot of shortcuts around it, but I'll give you an example. Um, I do quite a bit of speaking now, but five years ago, I didn't do very much. And I, I was one of those people that was afraid to get up in front of groups and talk. And so I joined a local Toastmasters group and, and, and just practiced, would go down and, you know, just practice talking. And then eventually you get, you get better at it. And then the thing with the video is, Facebook Live's a good way to do it. Using recording yourself on your own cell phone is a good way to do it so that you're not burning expensive dollars um, uh, or, or, or missing out on, the ch on a chance to, to uh, do it when it's more important, I guess. So it's just, you know, there's no easy answer to your question except the old Nike slogan, just do it. Yeah, who, who would have thought, Rick, that actually practicing something would make you better at it, hey? So what a concept. <laughs> Well, people, you know, in today's society, yeah. people are always looking for a shortcut that sometimes it doesn't exist. You know, it, it um, you know, there's always classes you can take. You know, I, I learned the hard way too. Again, when I go, when I'm using a speech analogy a lot, but when I was looking at becoming a better speaker, I took a lot of online classes. I went, and there's no secret. There, the secret is getting out there and doing it. And, um, uh, you know, and, you know, I just, I'd love to share a few statistics and you might know these, but this is for your, um, you know, for your listeners about how um, people just don't like to read anymore. They want to get their information through mm -hmm. video. And we're becoming a video first society. And, you know, every second, almost 17,000 hours of new video will be produced. Um, more video has been produced in the last 30 days than all the television networks have, have com done combined in the last 30 years. Um, this year, nearly 80% of all internet traffic will be made up of video. So my point is, we're, we're becoming a video first society. If you aren't doing video, you really need to do it and, and use it as um, a messaging vehicle, because that's the way people are uh, tuning in to the information that they're getting. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sold on the whole concept. I think, you know, this idea, <clears throat> for a long time i've been saying the video wave is coming it's here it's it's now it's not a matter of saying it's it's coming and you know like many things uh you can choose not to get on board but you're missing an incredible opportunity it's it's never and and for you to some extent rick having seen um the advertising journey the cost for you to make a video in the old days for you to put something in the newspaper you know, we talk about in marketing this concept of, you know, cost per thousand impressions. Mm -hmm. It's never been cheaper than, you know, my first practice, I, I did uh, ads in the newspaper and on the radio and it was incredibly expensive. It wasn't targeted. I couldn't reach just the people in my community. It would go all over town to people who weren't really my prospects. When, you know, I uh, promoted a video for $30 for my practice over the last couple of weeks there too. And uh, you, you know, I've had three and a half thousand people watch it. The opportunity for me to stand in front of three and a half thousand people for a five minute message, like I'll pay 30 bucks for that every day of the week. It's incredible. Well, that's a, that's a, the, and that's um, the shareability of videos is the other thing that makes them so powerful. And um, I just want to relate something about GoPro really quick about how they use video. We, we know that the video is there, but another important part that I spend in the book, which you talked about um, the cost per impression, my whole background is in direct response marketing. So I spend a lot of time combining um, direct response principles and incorporating them into the video uh, so that you can get people to respond. And let me tell you how GoPro became very successful because it ties into what you just said as far as shareability. At the end of every GoPro commercial, we had a, um, a little um, offer that said, go to our website, someone will win one of everything we make every single day. So three great things happened. People would go to their website in order to register for the contest, they would have to leave their name and address. So we were creating a database that we could remarket to. The second thing that happened, people would go to their website, 
and they would see all the other cool videos on the website and they'd share them with their friends and that created a viral effect. And then the last thing that happened was more classic direct response. They would go to the website, purchase the camera, generate revenue, which would offset the cost of advertising so that we could put more back into the advertising and help the business grow. So there's a powerful example of a offer that really helped the company grow from, you know, under a million in sales to a billion in only eight years. And I talk about all the different structures of different offers and things that you can use in, in your videos as well. Yeah, stunning. So the book, um, Rick, when is it being released and what's the best place that people can go to to find the book? Okay, so the book is called uh, Video Persuasion and it's being uh, released October 15th. You can find it on Amazon, but I would urge people also to go to my website, which is Rick Cesari, uh, R-I-C-K-C-E-S-A-R-I, rickcesari.com, and you can get a free download of the three most um, uh, engaging types of online content that we talked about today, but also how you can utilize it in your business. And that's a free download. And then on my website, I, I do a weekly blog with everything about video and video marketing and how you can use video to, to, to increase sales on Amazon to help your practice. So a lot of great resources there. Yeah, and I, I, again, an unsolicited testimony from me, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I have spent the last week in preparation of this, having a look around Rick's site. There's, there's loads of great content there. So all the links from what we've talked about to Rick's website, um, more details on the book, I'll make sure that they're on the show notes as well. So if you're driving along in the car listening to this at the moment, then just head on over to adiomedia.com forward slash podcast you'll find this episode and you'll find all the show notes there as, as well. So Rick, I appreciate from the bottom of my heart, you spending the last kind of 35 minutes or so with us and to kind of wind this up, bring us full circle here as well. Any final thoughts that you'd like to share with our audience about video to encourage them to get started as well? Yeah, and, and a little bit will be repetitious, but you know, if they aren't using video in their practice, they need to start using it. It's the way people communicate it's easier than ever. Technology has made it easier than ever. In my book, I talk about different online apps that basically um, you can, uh, that basically almost do all the work for you, um, that you can create videos without even using a camera. Um, there's different apps where you can take a written blog, plug it into this app, and it'll produce a video for you. And I, you know, I give a bunch of different links for that. So there really aren't any excuses for not being, not using video. You need to go out there and just get started and you're going to see the benefits of it once you do. Great. Well, Rick, on behalf of my audience, the Marketing Your Practice crew, thanks for all that you do. I, I'm, I'm so inspired by your continual journey through here, new books coming out, new content that you're sharing as well. So I want to encourage all of our audience to head on over to Rick's website, so rickcesari.com, and to have a look, uh, download the, uh, uh, you know, the three videos that you should be using there as well, and get a hold of this book here as, as well. So, Rick, thanks so much for joining us today. Um, I'm going to see if I can uh, hook us up for another conversation all about branding another time, because it's another conversation that our audience really is fascinated with. Yeah, oh, absolutely. We could spend another 40, 35, 45 minutes on branding and how you can differentiate your practice from all the other practices out there and uh, some real great ideas. But thank you for taking the time today. I really enjoyed it. I hope your uh, listeners uh, will, you know, were able to take away a few tips that'll benefit them. Yeah, great, Rick. Well, good luck with the launch of your book. I'll be getting a copy. I'm looking forward to it being launched. So one will be coming uh, my way as soon as October 15th comes around. So I look forward to seeing you soon, mate. Take care. Have a great day. All right, thank you. Bye now. If you enjoyed listening to this podcast, you have to come and check out the Community Influencer Program. It's my monthly coaching program where we take all this material and I'll work one-on-one -on -one with you to apply, implement, systematize, and help guide you and your practice to the next level. Now, you can join me on over at adiomedia.com forward slash join. That's adiomedia.com forward slash join. I'd love to see you in there.